Hello there everyone and welcome to John Drinks and welcome to a new setup. You might not even realise that I've actually moved flat because the old flat had a bookcase with booze on the shelves and by crazy coincidence the new place has a virtually identical bookcase but the walls have changed over so I'm now over here instead of the other way around so that's... I swear I'm not trolling you, I have moved. Um, that was fun in the middle of a pandemic, but hey-ho, uh, that's not why you've clicked on this video. Or if it is, then hi. Um, the reason you've clicked on this video is for this lurid yellow bottle. This is Warnix Advocar. Warnix? Warnix? Have I fucked this up already? Warnix. Warnix. I did indeed fuck it up already. This is a staple of Christmas. And I don't know about you, but I don't know enough about this stuff. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to learn through the internet and also... Well, I'm going to drink some and kind of tell you what it's like on its own. You would normally have this with, like, lemonade. But we'll get into that in another video. In fact, I'm going to do a bit of a snowball off because tis the season, unless you're watching this in, like, March 2025, in which case... How things going? Good? Not good? Worse? If you're interested in watching me make a snowball and then try to improve upon it, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell because there'll be a notification coming this week about that very video. It's, it's coming for you. It's, it's gonna be interesting. For now though, we're gonna have a quick look at the bottle and then we're gonna go into a bit of the history because it's Odd. Also, a couple of years ago, they made Warnink's Advocar, like, jumpers, and I really wanted one because it was gaudy as fuck. Uh, I did not get my hands on one, which is a shame because I feel it would be on brand. So anyway, produced in Holland, 17.2%. Irvin Warnink, established in 1616, is the largest manufacturer of quality Advocat in the world. I'd like to know who is the largest manufacturer of shit Advocat in the world. Uh, and it does indeed mention the snowball for the perfect snowball. Take two shots of Warnink's Advocat and pour it into a long drinks glass filled with ice. Add the juice of quarter of a lime and top up with lemonade. Uh, fun fact, actually, I did not realise that these guys and Glenn Fiddick have something of a connection. Uh, it is distributed uh, by William Grant and Sons for the UK. So that kind of took me by surprise. I did not realise that. I thought they were just kind of like this vaguely niche Christmas liqueur. Now then, I'm going to go a little bit into brief history. It was more sort of etymology because Advocar, that's a weird name, right? Where's, where's that come from? Why is it called that? Well, according to several manufacturers, and also the Oxford Companion to Sugar and Sweets... Yeah, who says Oxford people aren't fun? Why would just call it the Book of Sugar? I, I don't know. According to them, the origins of this can be traced back to a drink called Avocate, which was made by native Brazilians, and it was made out of avocados. Ah! So, basically, when they brought it over to Northern Europe, um, they were like, hey, here's this alcoholic avocado drink. By the way, I can't be the only person who thinks in the year 2020, if these guys made alcoholic avocado liqueur, that hipsters would lose their nips over it. They'd be throwing out the bitcoins for that shit. Seriously. Why is, why is that not a thing? There's now going to be people commenting downstairs being like, that is a thing, and here it is. So imagine that, but like, Jade Green. Now, when they imported it over to Northern Europe, there's a problem with the climate. You can't grow avocados there. It's not so much of a problem now, but at the time, big problem. So, they decided to sub out the avocados for egg yolks. Because banter? I don't know, I, I'm struggling to make the connection myself as well, but they did it. So, you kind of ended up with this weird alcoholic custard, which is here. Fun fact, uh, Advocat is also the Dutch word for lawyer. The name is actually shorthand for something called Advocaten Borrel, or lawyer's drink. Borrel meaning sort of a small drink that you sip, basically. And there's also a quote from the Dictionary of Dutch Language, which I'm going to read off my phone because there's no way in hell I'm going to remember this, and I want to do this outside of 20 takes, so... 
Uh, so named as a good lubricant for the throat and thus considered especially useful for a lawyer who must speak in public, which I find a little bit surprising, not because it makes sense, but because there's a drink named after lawyers that isn't meant as an insult or a slur to them, which there's a nice change of pace, I suppose. In the past, or in Dutch versions of this certainly, only egg yolks were used, but in import versions, they use the whole egg. So there's a bit of white in here as well for your added protein, I guess. So if you're looking at those gains, don't fucking drink this. This is alcoholic custard. This will, this will mess you up. And with that, I'm gonna drink some. I, I'm not convinced by the setup I've got going on here, um, but it has taken me like, five hours worth of moving furniture and all sorts of other chanel my christ this is thick wow you know like cartons of custard um also the alcohol component of this um it's usually brandy i think some cheaper ones do just use sort of generic grain spirit i'm not 100 percent certain on that so you know if you are the manufacturer of a cheaper or alternative advocat and you think I'm slurring you, please let me know down below and maybe we can work this out without the use of litigation. Um, so it, I mean, it just, it fucking looks like custard. Look at that. Look, it's... <laughs> if you want me to talk about the legs on this one, we are going to be here all fucking day, so let's not do that. Um, there are loads of cocktail ideas for this. Um, none of them really push the boat out. None of them go too kind of niche or unusual. They all kind of go, hmm, custard, what goes with custard? And then kind of play off of that theme, which to be fair, I had to think, what could you do with this? And I kind of struggled too. You know, you, you can't really stick any wine in this or vermouth. Maybe sparkling wine, maybe that could be a thing. Um, but yeah, it's it's an odd one. So naturally the go-to is stick fucking lemonade in it because that's what you do with your custard. So historically, I have just put a glug of brandy in custard and that's been fucking fine. This doesn't smell like that though. It just kind of smells like fresh cream and heavy booze. Hmm, it's not the most appealing nose on the planet, which, I mean, given that I am drinking alcoholic custard right now, is not what I was expecting to be saying, not gonna lie. Hmm, okay, well, I'm gonna drink this now because that's what we do on this channel. The clue's in the name, really. I tilted it back and I was like, where is it? I mean, it's charming. <laughs> That's normally what you say when somebody else's toddler is having a tantrum and you don't want to say, what an ill-raised little shit. Oh man, it, it oozes forth. It's sweet, duh. There is a vanilla -y component, it's quite warming. The brandy... Um, it's definitely not the best stuff you can get your hands on. It's, it's definitely a bit rough and ready. In fact, the alcohol in it doesn't play very well with the rest of it because the rest of it is like creamy and sweet and then the alcohol's a bit abrasive by comparison. It's a little bit... Ugh. You can tell I've never been in a proper fight before. Cat fight, sure. It's like somebody took sugar-free custard and they spiked it with like... You know, I almost want to say absinthe. There's something a little bit aniseedy about it. And then there's a weird sugar and artificial sweetness thing coming through. Math feels thick, duh. Um, I don't know how to describe this as anything other than like custard with kinda cheap booze in it, um, which is a shame because a bowl of this isn't the cheapest thing you can get your hands on. I mean, it's not, you know, massively expensive. Although I'm kind of getting a little bit more why you would cut this with lemonade. It's to kind of drown out the booze a little bit, I think. Um, you could have this neat. I, it is so thick that you could have it as an alternative as custard as well. It's sort of a custard that keeps. Um, I mean, 
now that I've opened that, that will keep for half a year in the fridge. Which is another fucking bottle I've got to keep in the fridge. Woohoo. Should I finish this? Anyway, that, that was my thoughts and a little bit of information on Advocar. Did, did you learn something? I did. About myself, mainly. Comment down below if you've ever tried this before or if you've tried it in cocktails. Snowballs, duh. Uh, or have you ever tried those, like, pre-packaged ones? Because, um... Oh, oh, they, they do official ones in a tin now. Uh, so I, I might... I'm pretty sure I'm going to go head-to-head -head with this against the bottled ones. Because uh, uh, initially I thought they were the same thing. But they are not. This is stronger than the bottled stuff. So... Oh, be be intrigued to see how how that goes. I'm I'm just pushing for content at the minute. R r mm -mm. Yeah, uh, thumb this video if you enjoyed me talking about alcoholic custard, and do join me next time where I'll be drinking something else. Well, according to several manufacturers, and also according to the what was it called? The book of what? Oxen Companion. It's always a companion. It's not just a book, is it? It's got to be a fucking companion. Ugh, Oxford and Toffee Nose cunts.